Hi, I'm Kirk Harbinger, and this is Bethany Gagné. She is the founder of the Albany Peace Project and Numinous. So we are nearing the end of mm. our two weeks together, meditating all together uh, for the purpose of making Albany a peaceful place. Mm. And so uh, we've done, uh, done some work, uh, learned some things through the video, and uh, had some amazing people uh, this week and, and last with you. Yeah. So. yeah. So where are we going? Uh, what is it that we want to talk about today? Collective emotion, emotions as a whole and how it has impact on the rest of, of the world. Yeah. Um, how, how does that work? Yeah, and, and again, I'm going to refer to some of the amazing work of the Institute of HeartMath. Um, HeartMath has put sensors around the globe and what these sensors do is kind of register changes in the magnetic field of the earth which many scientists uh, feel have a lot to do with our emotions. Um, that somehow we, there's this, this kind of interplay between our emotional state and the, and the earth's magnetic field. And uh, what they found is the fact that when the globe is focused on a big event, um, that these sensors actually register a change in the magnetic field of the Earth. So, for instance, um, when people were focused, when Lady Di was killed or uh, when President Obama was elected, 9-11, the sensors were actually responding even before 9-11 actually happened. Um, there seemed to be almost like this global shudder that happened. And so what, what people don't recognize is the fact that we are, seem, what seems to be, be true, what science seems to be demonstrating, um, is what all the mystics have known for centuries, and that is that we're all connected in this energetic field. And I often use the, the body as an example. So the body, we have um, different systems. We have the muscular system, the digestive system, the endocrine system, all these different systems enclosed in one body, right, over this overarching nervous system. Well, what if that elegant design doesn't stop at the individual? that maybe we're, you and I are different aspects of another larger nervous system, right? And so that seems to be the truth. That's, that's what's real, is the fact that we are all part of this greater energetic field. And if we start cultivating this awareness of that we're connected to this field, as the director of research, Roland McCrady, says at the Institute of Heart Math, what are you feed, feeding the field today? Are you feeding it hatred? Are you feeding it love? Are you feeding it peace? And the idea of can we live with this understanding that we live Live in this field and that our vote matters and we need to vote. Uh, we can't just sit around and wait for somebody else to be a hero. I have the phrase that I've heard this phrase about I'd rather be the superhero in a movie than the damsel in distress. Like what do you want to be? You want to walk around feeling all victimized and, and like you're passive and there's nothing you can do? Or really take responsibility for our portion of the field and send an intention and vote for peace. Right. You know, Kirk, you said something earlier that I really liked. We were talking about common sense, and um, you were talking about making common coherence. Can you talk about that? Uh, you know, so uh, we, we refer to, we use the term common sense a lot. Like, that's just such common sense. We should all know that. Right, right. You know? And um, so why can't we make coherence common right. coherence? Right, right. And make it, all of us know what that is and just start living it, right? Yeah, every day. Every day, throughout the day. Right, right. In everything that we do. Yeah, and if we put it in our language, like you said, common coherence, then that's just then people know what you're talking about. And I know that before you do a, um, before we do any conference call with the Institute of Heart Math, we do a five minute heart lock in. You know, Google they do five minutes mindful breathing before they start meetings. This is the wave of the future of us kind of taking responsibility for our inner state, getting coherent, and then knowing that we bring it up, we bring it more when we, we are in this beautiful state within. At the end of the day, is it not all about outcomes, however, right? Yeah. So when, when they start, when Google starts those meetings with uh, meditation, what happens? Do they get results? Well, I would assume they would, right? Because it's Google, and they're only on the progressive, innovative, you know, thing. And so they know that they, for them to stay competitive, they have to stay innovative and progressive. And so that that's why they give all of their employees ex uh, extensive opportunities to practice mindfulness as if it, they're athletes becoming mindful athletes, because they know it's going to cultivate this inner state that's going to create these outer results. Yeah. So what can we do on a daily basis in order to cultivate mindfulness? in order to cultivate coherence and therefore have influence on our environment, on the rest of the world. Right, right. 
Well, you know, we've got we've got a video link underneath this video about the Global Coherence Initiative um, that the Institute of Heart Math has done, and what they do talk about in the beginning of that video is about this idea that what we've been teaching the whole time, um, this idea that when we take our mind and anchor it down into the heart. Um, we work from a more compassionate state, a space, a more intuitive space, and so the more and more we can train ourselves, as like athletes or musicians, to hold that heart, beautiful heart space, um, then what happens is we uh, we can hold it longer and longer, and we will have superior outcomes. The research shows that we have better clarity, better decision making, better perceptual fields, performance, um, all by cultivating this internal state. So the one thing I would suggest is one to always be striving to focus in the heart. And I know um, this is a discipline, and you're going to mess up a lot. I mess up all the time. Um, but the idea that the more you train, the more you get to hold it, the more you live there for longer. And what happens is you become, I always say, happy for no good reason. When we lighten the heart, we loosen the chest wall, we allow the heart to become more buoyant, you will smile faster, you will laugh more, you will um, become, I always say, happy for no good reason. And all because you, you primed your nervous system to move into this spate of buoyance. Um, it's almost like we work really hard to keep good feelings down, and when you, let, when you lift that up, good feelings rise up with such a force that you realize, it's like a buoy under the water that you let it go, that the good feelings come up with such force that you realize it was there all along. We were the ones working, suppressing it, with our, with our stinking thinking, to quote Stuart Smalley. <laughs> <laughs> and, and who wouldn't want a legacy? Uh, who wouldn't want to be known as a person who lit up the room? Right. Right, the life of the party. Right, right. As opposed to, oh, that was the person who sucked the energy out, yeah. of, out right, of the room. Right, 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 right. Do you want to be the damsel in distress or the superhero? Like, which one do you want to be? Well, you know, we have assets here to be superheroes. We really do. And it is a choice, right? It is a choice. It is a choice. And the, and the more, here's the thing. Don't take our word for any of this. Go practice it. You practice it. Many of you have done the whole two weeks. And go back to when you were at December 31st. And you'll notice you're probably in a much different space right now than you were two weeks ago. So speaking of that, uh, as you continue past these, these two weeks, um, did you want to ask folks to do something in particular, emails? Uh, yeah, we would love to hear your testimonials, so if you um, have experienced what you've experienced for the two weeks, we'd love to see that. We'd love to see you at numinous events. Again, numinous events support this, mu this research, and now we've turned into the Global Peaceful Cities Project, which means that we are creating space on the web and helping organizing um, other cities to organize. We could use funds for that. We greatly appreciate that. So by attending numerous events, not only do you get amazing information, but you're also supporting this research. So that's huge. Um, the other thing, we do have the Coherence for a Cause Benefit on February 4th um, that we would uh, appreciate uh, a good attendance for. And again, you're going to come to that event and leave enriched with some expansive concepts because really, if you sum all this down, it's how much are we willing to stop contracting so much and start expanding and being present and widening our perceptual fields and opening to love and can we, can we train ourselves in opening to not just tolerate our neighbor, be politically correct, but love our neighbor. Well said. What else, right? Well said. What else is there? That's right. Yeah, so. So thank you. So uh, we are going to conclude uh, this video series. And again, we do ask that you continue to meditate, continue to be a positive influence on your community and the rest of the world. And, um, and we're always looking for ideas too, right? So you Yeah, know. oh yeah, reach out if you do have ideas. In fact, you know, this stuff, again, I say simple but not easy. And I just also want to say on February 11th, I'm going to be offering, we're going to start a 10-month intentional master class where we can support each other through intention and meditation. And it's going to be a... Um, it's going to be, we're, we're going to be rolling up our sleeves and really moving the dial in our nervous system. But we're going to do it with a tribe, with the support of a group around us, so that if you make any steps in progress and a change within yourself, that you will have the support of the tribe to help you keep that change and not backslide. Um, right? That sounds so. exciting. Uh, so that's a way for someone to um, get more knowledge, mm -hmm. get more practice. Yeah. Uh, very, very, uh, sounds like it's sort of an intensive 
uh, scenario? It's going to be very intensive, not only as a group, but then I'd be um, individually meeting with each of the members. I'm looking for 10 people for this master class, mm -hmm. and we'll be working with their subtle energy fields, their biofeedback. We're going to be moving in specifically into and in customizing meditations for their nervous system um, while also having broader concepts for the whole group, meeting once a month. and. So it's a whole thing to design to make sure that you, in 10 months, you are in a totally different place. Wow. Yeah. So 10 spots for that only. Yes. Okay. So now you have nine. I'm in. Oh, oh okay. cool. So All right. <laughs> Fun. We're going to do this. Um, so, so definitely sign up for the February 4th, um, Coherence for a Cause, mm -hmm. February 11th. Anyone who, who is interested in this, you'll want to uh, let Bethany know uh, as soon as possible. So Yeah. Yeah. Good for stuff. Now, and I just want to thank everyone so much for your support. We can't do this work without you. That's right. We can't. I mean, we, we li literally, like, without you, this doesn't, there's nothing going on here. So thank you so much for all of your participation and support. It's been a great couple of weeks, and we're so glad that you joined us. I uh, look forward to hearing from you again, and uh, keep meditating. Uh, we look forward to, uh, to doing a lot more with you in the future. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.